the most psychotic woman on paternity court. Five years ago, and he didn't leave any kids behind. So I think Bobby probably thought that he was gonna die young. And when I'm out, I don't you know what know she's that. doing. You're going off of what other people is telling you. Lies. Be a man and ask me yourself. Lies. You can never do that. Because we don't got that type of connection. Why? We don't got that mother. Why? That, Look that, how you cheated that, me. That, that Look how you cheated me. Our son. Miss Richardson says she and Mr. Smith were dating, and they tried to have a baby. But now, Mr. Smith says he's not the dad, claiming he was away when the baby was born. He thinks he knows who the real dad is. It's all up to the court to figure this out. Let the drama begin. Um, around October 31st, um, we were together. I had um, left Job Corps, which he was still in. I left on the 28th. On the 31st, I had sent for him to come in town for the weekend so, you know, we can go home on weekends. That day we did have sex and that's whenever my daughter was conceived. Their relationship had barely reached the eight month mark when this baby idea surfaced. That's a new one, isn't it? Ms. Richardson reveals that Mr. Smith suggested having a baby, and she agreed, despite being only 19 years old. Therefore, Judge Lake points out how love-colored glasses might have clouded Ms. Richardson's judgment. I actually was excited. Um, you was you were excited? Yes, ma'am. At what point do you feel doubtful then? Well, I was doubtful at the first. You were? Yes, ma'am, I was. Well, why you all have been planning for this? I thought she probably found somebody else outside of Job Corps, or the, you know, probably got old every day. He called me every day. However, Ms. Richardson recalls the moment when she informed Mr. Smith about her pregnancy which was initially met with his silence. Surprisingly, Mr. Smith claims he was excited about the news, but doubts crept in, suspecting infidelity. Let's just hear Mr. Smith's witness for a second. She would say stuff. I would hear voicemails. I would see messages. And what did these voicemails say? And what did these messages say? Um, she was upset at him. She was with another dude, and she was smiling, and she was happy about the person. Now buckle up for some juice. A video shows a man kissing a child on the forehead. Miss Richardson claims he's the godfather, not the father. But the judge warns that once you say someone isn't the father, you can't change it. Then Mr. Brock enters, and we want to know his relationship with Miss Richardson. I've built that relationship with him that quick. We've told each other things that I have told nobody else. We've been through things that I have told nobody else. We've been through some some bad times, even in just the eight. Like people are focused on the eight months that we've known each other. Oh like, God, this is months. so exhausting. So you all like... are all just kids, <laughs> exactly. and everything is so exactly. intense. Here, we have a heated exchange. Judge Lake involved parties for their immature behavior and emphasized the complex family ties at stake. Darlene Bagley, the twin's mother, speaks up, asserting Kalani's grandparent. She expresses concern over the sudden appearance of the supposed godfather, questioning his authenticity. Well, isn't that what we're here for? He was holding the baby and kissing on her. I'm like, I don't even know this guy. Do my son know this guy? If you're a godfather, why we don't know you? Where did you come from? Every time he gets mad, he said, oh, that's not my daughter. Oh, that's not my daughter. Um, I'm not gonna put my all into her because I don't know if that's my daughter. He has plenty of times to get a DNA test. In an emotional turn, the twin's mother opens up about her attachment to the child. She reveals the loss of her son and how having a grandchild means a lot to her. Despite the turmoil, she hopes to spend quality time with the baby. So, all right, everyone, let's refocus on Kalani's best interest. Here come the crucial DNA results. It has been determined by this court. The biological father is Mr. Smith. Mr. Hollis disputes being Chloe's father, alleging he's been paying child support for someone else's child. Ms. Anderson insists he takes responsibility for his actions and their daughter, Chloe. Their emotions are charged with tension and uncertainty. Whereas, this is how the session started. I failed to appear to court because I didn't want to take a DNA test and had to pay for it all by myself. I offered to go half with Mr. Hollins, but he wanted me to pay the whole thing. And he never went to court to take the DNA that's test. Four times, he failed to appear four times. Your Honor, that's Four not right. times you failed to appear? Well, here we have a classic he said, she said situation. Mr. Hollis claims he's been paying child support and health care expenses as ordered. Ms. Anderson disagrees, insisting she received only a fraction of that amount. 
they admit to being in a relationship until a surprise Facebook message revealed another woman's pregnancy by Mr. Hollins. Can you believe it? He basically gave me an ultimatum saying that if I went, we were over. I don't take ultimatums yeah. very lightly, so I went anyway. With a guy that you ain't even told me about. I just supposed to assume your, and say, Your Honor, hey, he good? knew he oh. knew about this guy Who because we were guy? on. It was literally a friend, nothing more than a friendship. But Mr. Hollins, he, he said, if you go, then we're done. Here's a twist in the case. Miss Anderson expresses her doubts about the relationship, feeling hurt by Mr. Hollins' reaction after she admits to a mistake. They had been close, like best friends, but things soured. She reveals her efforts to be honest, but it seems Mr. Hollins couldn't handle it. Here, listen to what he has to say next. I found out on Facebook that she had a baby. That she had a baby or that yeah. she was pregnant? Yeah. She had a baby, not pregnant, a pregnancy I did oh. never know about. Wait a That's minute, so from the point she went out of town with the friend until she, she actually came gave back. birth to the child, you had no idea she was even pregnant? No idea. What a mess, paternity peeps. Miss Anderson dropped a bombshell in court, revealing that Mr. Hollins was completely unaware of the pregnancy until she gave birth. Additionally, she had unprotected nights with another man, Mr. Williams, during the same period. An online conception calendar led her to suspect he could be the father. The date you were intimate with the other man is what? March the 30th. Now your due date was December 4th, 2013. So that was the day they pinpointed. When was your daughter actually born? December the 7th. If you go back to the, your dates of intimacy, you were also intimate with Mr. Williams as well. Yes. Yeah, right. Judge, we don't need a calculator for that. Oh. Boy. But anyway, Mr. Hollins confronts Miss Anderson about her intimate encounter with another man, Mr. Williams, just two days after him. But wait right there. The judge chimes in, highlighting Mr. Hollins' failure to appear for DNA tests, a situation of his own making. So you weren't involved in the pregnancy, or she didn't I, even know she was pregnant? I didn't even know she was pregnant either. Nobody. I, I, I ain't heard nothing. She didn't. I, I didn't know. But I get how, how can I tell you something that I, that I don't know? If you would have took the DNA test, then you would have found out over a hey, year listen, ago. You had already made up your mind in your head that I was the daddy, because you didn't tell me about him. Talk about a tangled web. Miss Anderson admits to waiting too long to inform Mr. Williams about the potential paternity. She had been convinced Mr. Hollins was the father until a recent revelation. If only Miss Anderson had thought to inform the court about Mr. Williams sooner, this mess might have been avoided. At this point in her life, at 17 months old, she doesn't know anyone as daddy. Right, yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna be truthful with I don't even know how to be a father. I'm not even, I'm honestly not even, I don't, I'm still taking care of myself. You see what I'm saying? I don't even know how to be a father. My father wasn't there. You see what I'm saying? But that's not to blame nobody. You see what I'm saying? I just don't know how to be one. The moment of truth arrives. Mr. Williams was open to being Chloe's dad, but Mr. Hollins was uncertain about his diaper-changing skills. The judge assures them they'll learn. It's time for the results. DNA Diagnostic Report is here, so turn up your volume because the verdict is in. Mr. Williams, you are not the father. Mr. Hollins, you are her father. Thank you. In this sizzling courtroom showdown, Mr. Harrington denies being the father of Lainey, Miss Day's one-month-old daughter. He's adamant that their relationship ended before she became pregnant. On the contrary, Miss Day stands firm, asserting she's never falsely accused someone of paternity. Both were eagerly waiting to settle the score. We were living together in September. So we got into it, broke up. Um, my middle child, uh, the other child that we have together um, was having seizures. So she was in and out of the hospital. When we was in the hospital, at the hospital, we had did it. So when we did it, I think, I really do believe that's the day that I- At the hospital? People. Yes, ma'am. Miss Day explains her relationship with Mr. Harrington. They lived together in September, but faced difficulties linked to their child's health problems and hospital visits. They were intimate, even at the hospital, but she insists November wasn't when she got pregnant. The surprise pregnancy came to light during an MRI test, 
adding drama and uncertainty to their lives. I actually go to my first appointment to figure out when my due date was and a time in and different stuff. So once I did figure that out, I told him. That's not true at all. First what of all, she didn't your... even tell me. She didn't even tell me that she was pregnant. I had to find out through an anonymous texter that. How did you find out she was pregnant? An anonymous texter, I swear. We got into a conversation. I got the text right here. Well, in my opinion, that's a clear shocker. Although, Miss Day received messages referring to guy number one and guy number two, which hinted at her pregnancy. She attempted to contact guy number one, but faced phone call avoidance. When confronted, her sister disclosed her pregnancy. The drama escalates as both parties claim to have found out at different times adding complexity to the situation. Even if it was something that I did not tell him, it was only a week, probably like a week span of time. Yeah, you sound right. And how do I sound? Like, like somebody telling up, the truth, Like you're right? trying to, like, like what you do all the time. Um, you try guy, to work around a lot. You working around a lot right now. the message. You, you not, you lying. You anyway, not keeping it a band. Keep it a band. Oh, so what are you lying Keep about? Keep it a band. I don't lie. This not being your baby, right? It ain't my baby. Let's rewind to Delaney's birth. Mr. Harrington claims he was there showing support, even though he questioned the paternity. He expressed wanting to be there for the child, but Miss Day interpreted it differently, sensing he might doubt the baby's parentage. Despite his initial doubts, he accepted the baby at the hospital without voicing any disapproval. When he came to the hospital, he asked her not to be named Nelania. He wanted her to be named Naya. Um, they just trying to make He don't want to admit nothing because he feel because his girlfriend told him that if he's the father to this baby, that he would have to. They would break up, and he Actually, don't want to yeah, go. They broke up. Mr. Harrington's doubts stem from his belief that the conception date doesn't align with their activities. He argues the due date he heard from the doctor, August 3rd, 2018, contradicts the November conception timeline he calculated. Miss Day contends that she wasn't intimate with anyone until mid-November, adding suspicion to the situation. I hope to just get to the truth, because if it's my child, I'm going to step up, because that's what I do. And if it ain't mine, I'm just going to move on. I just want to be in my child life. All right, and your hopes, Miss Day? I hope to get the truth. I hope you're not the father. Before revealing the DNA results, Miss Day confidently asserts Mr. Harrington is the father, dispelling any doubts. The suspense builds as they prepare to open the envelope. Is there a twist lurking in the outcome? Or will the truth align with her certainty? Let's find out. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Harrington, you are not Told the you. What? Told you, Are bro. you serious? Told you, can I really rock? No, you can't. Sorry. Okay. No, you I'm can't. You know why? Because you have another child with her, so you're not going to clown in here okay. because that's wow. acting a fool and that's what I don't do. In the case of Jones versus Fowler, Miss Jones was furious with Mr. Fowler for denying he was the father of her five-month-old son, Adonis, even though they share a two-year-old child. She's determined to protect Adonis from the experience of growing up without a father given her childhood hardships. Every time he comes to see his son, his two-year-old son, he forgets about Adonis. Like, when other people get in his head, Adonis don't exist. But when it's when we all alone, that's his son. No, I don't believe it's my child, Your Honor. I don't. You I don't hope, I hope the best way I can. I hope about the best way I can, but I don't think I'm a father. You don't help him. That's you never did nothing for my son. Miss Jones was upset with Mr. Fowler, who denied being Adonis's father. They share a two-year-old child, but he doesn't want a relationship with her they've had trust issues, with both accusing each other of infidelity. Now, Mr. Fowler questions Adonis' paternity, while Miss Jones insists he's the father. It's so bottom of the barrel. Once he broke off the line, I don't love you. He never if told I me were, that. If I were you, I'd be here for my son. He never told me No, you still trying to argue with him, Miss <laughs> Jones, to get his attention. Excuse me, Your Honor. I'm no, not don't talk. Don't point. start talking. Their relationship remained casual after Kimari's birth, primarily focused on cozying up. When Miss Jones became pregnant with Adonis, Mr. Fowler initially expressed doubts about paternity. The tension between them escalates as they disagree about the child's father. Just wait for what he adds next. The dates add up. Around the same time I got pregnant with Kimarvi is around the same time I got pregnant with Adonis, and he was the only woman I'm sleeping with. Besides, it was him and another person, but he's for sure the father. Miss Jones told me that she was in a whole relationship. Oh. You knew oh. I was in a relationship. You ruined my relationship. No, I did not. You did. Amid conflicting claims, Miss Jones states she had sex with Mr. Fowler in February, conceiving Adonis. 
She emphasizes their separation during the period. Mr. Fowler, however, alleges other men's involvement and doubts the timeline. Their disagreement over the conception window added fuel to the drama. When I'm not, I, I don't know what know she's that. doing. You're going off of what other people is telling you. Lies. Be a man and ask me yourself. Lies. You can never do that. Lies, because we don't got that type of connection. Why? We don't got that mother. Why? That, look that, how you treated that, me. That, that look how you treat me. Towards our son. So, oh, so look how on. you treat me. Now I need to understand what were you hearing or what did you witness? I'm not the father. All right, paternity peeps. Mr. Fowler claimed he doubts Adonis's paternity due to a one-time encounter with Miss Jones in February. However, when another man from Miss Jones's past asserts his potential fatherhood, it caused tension between the two men. Mr. Fowler's concerns and Miss Jones's complicated relationships intensified everything. You mean to tell me that poor Kimari is sitting up there having to listen to this nonsense and Adonis having to listen to this toxic nonsense for two people that don't know when to leave well enough alone? You all are not good for one another? Despite their bumpy history, Miss Jones yearned for a family while Mr. Fowler seemed uninterested. Oh man, this infuriated Judge Lake to the point where she had to impart life lessons on the consequences of unprotected intimacy. Ah oh, well, enough intentions have already surfaced, so why don't we just cut to the chase and go straight to the DNA results, shall we? It has been determined by this court, Mr. Fowler. You are not the father. Easy and simple. Well, guess I'll be up here again. I'm not even mad because... Easy and simple. I'm, ha I'm happy. That, that's gonna give me a step to leave him alone. Yo, that's crazy. 